Okay, so 28, 29, 30 has us set up and solve a quadratic equation to find the value of x. It says that makes sense, so you'll see it once we find <clears throat> that there's two solutions, since a quadratic provides you with two solutions. Quadratic looks like this. And you'll end up with x equals something and x equals something else. Okay, we'll find out that one of those, when we plug it back in for x, may give us a negative value, and we have yet to deal with negative angles, so that would not make sense. <clears throat> so, after we figure that out, then we can find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. <clears throat> so let's start out with 29, and we look at these two angles that they provide us with expressions for and we consider the relationship between them. Um, we know that these are parallel lines, so we know that if they're in this certain uh, orientation here, one down here, bottom left, one up here, top right, we know they're alternate interior angles, or alternate exterior angles, so we know that they're congruent. So we can set up the following equation. Now, I showed you earlier, this is what a quadratic looks like. So this is the form we need to write it in. So to do that, we can add 3x to both sides, and we'll add 7 to both sides. So we get x squared plus 7x minus 8 equals zero. So now that we have it in that form, we have really two options. We can factor it. Or we can use quadratic formula and just plug in those values. Your call. You can do it either way. I prefer factoring, especially when the numbers are easy like this. Um, notice that the coefficient on x squared, or the number that x squared is being multiplied by, uh, is 1. Since nothing is written right there, we know it's 1. So really, our product of the two numbers that go here and here will be negative 8. And then our sum will be that middle number, the b value, so 7. So you have to think what two numbers multiply together to get negative 8, that when you add them together you get 7. Um, automatically you think like uh, 2 and 4, but when you add these two up, you do not get 7. So that wouldn't work for positive two or negative two and positive four. So we got to think of other factors, like eight and one. If we did eight and negative one, we would get for our sum positive seven. So these two values work: positive eight and negative one. Now. I like to just think of it as what value x in this binomial here, let me highlight it, would provide us with 0 as the sum. So if I plugged in a value for x, what would make plus 8 and that x equal 0? Another way you can do this is just to write x plus 8 equals 0, and solve for x. <clears throat> Same thing for erase this. negative 1 and 0, x minus 1 and 0. So I'll just write this out. There we go. So x plus 8 equals 0, that must mean that x equals negative 8. 
and then for this one, x equals positive 1. So here are two solutions. <coughs> Get rid of this. So again, we found out what values x work for our quadratic equation, but now we need to see which ones make sense. So one seems simple enough, right? One should work. Let's plug it in though. Negative three times one minus seven gives us negative 10. And since we haven't dealt with negative degrees yet, x equaling positive one does not make sense. On the other hand, if we plug in negative eight, we get negative 24 minus 7, sorry, positive 24 minus 7, which would be positive 17. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we know that this angle here is 27 or 17 degrees, which means this one is also 17 degrees since they're alternate exterior angles. <coughs> And so we know that angle 2, which is vertical of that angle, should be 17 degrees. And then we know that the angle 1 here is supplementary to angle 2. So we know that 17 plus the measure of angle 1 equals 180. So you can just take 180 and subtract out that 17, which would give us 163. Now let's go through question 28, because in question 28, we have a leading coefficient that is not one. So it's a little more difficult. When looking at these two angles, you'll see that the relationship between them is that they are alternate interior angles, which you know to be congruent. So we can write the following equation. Again, we want it to look as a quadratic does, ax squared plus bx equals, or minus c equals zero. So we subtract 14x from both sides. Make sure that step is in there. Minus 3 equals 0. So here's our quadratic. Um, <clears throat> this is the way I like to do it. We can talk about other methods, but I do the product and the sum. I say, okay, my my product here is actually a times c. So this constant here times the leading coefficient. So negative 3 times positive 5 is negative 15. And then the sum there is negative 14. So we have to think about two numbers that multiply together to get negative 15. Then when we add them together, we get negative 14. So 3 and 5 comes to mind immediately. One of these has to be negative. But when I add those up, that's not negative 14. Um, obviously, if we did negative 3 and positive 15, we get positive 12, which also wouldn't work. So let's look at other factors. Um, let's do 15 and 1. It would make sense for 15 to be negative, because negative 15 plus 1 equals negative 14. So this one works here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, looks good. So these are the two values we use, negative 15 and one. So from here, I use the box method. The idea is I'm splitting up this quadratic into four terms instead of three so that I can place them inside the box. So instead of it being 5x squared minus 14x, it would be 5x squared 
minus 15x plus x minus 3 equals 0. And these four terms right here on the left-hand side of the equation is what I will pop into the box. In which case, all we need to do to finally factor it is consider the greatest common factor in this row and write that right here on the left hand side. So the greatest common factor of 5x squared and negative 15x would be 5x. And then like to do this column and the greatest common factor in that column is x. And then the bottom row, greatest common factor there should be 1. And then the greatest common factor from this column should be negative 3. So this times this is this quadratic. So quickly I'll write it. 5x plus 1 times x minus 3 equals 0. And then we can do what we did on the last problem make this two separate equations and solve for x. This should be dividing by both sides by 5, we get x equals negative 1 fifth. Then we need to check which one of these solutions will actually work for our problem. I'm going to get rid of all this. So if we plugged in negative 1 fifth into 14x, we would get a negative value. So that's the one that won't work. So our solution should be 3. So if I plug that in here for 14x, I get 14 times x is 3. So we end up with... 30 plus 12 should be 42. So we get 42 degrees. Um, 42 degrees is this angle here and this angle here. So the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2, those are congruent to each other and they're both supplementary to the angle we found, 42 degrees. So we'll just do 180 minus 42. Let's zoom in here. We get 138. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2 is equal to 138. Try 30 on your own.